For many people, the notion of range anxiety is due to the car not having enough battery to get you where you want to go. I don't like that phrase very much. I mean, don't put enough petrol in your car to get to the next filling station. And well, combustion cars can have range anxiety. So I am not a huge fan of that in the electric world. But the problem is not necessarily that there isn't enough charge in your battery. It's more that you can't charge your car in the right time or you have to stop on your way or you're worried the charger could be broken. I accept all those things, but what if you could charge your car without ever getting out of it? Or during your journey, what if you never had to plug in? Welcome to the channel. My name is Martin Lee and that's what we're discussing today. Oh, by the way, if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Anytime we talk about EVs, the story always seems to be, you know, more often than not, it's Tesla making the news. And this time is no exception, but not in the way you might think. Nikola Tesla was the famous scientist of his day, working in the fields of electrical and mechanical engineering. In modern days, people are much more likely to think of the Californian company of the same name that is really putting it up to the established car makers. But the link to what we're talking about today goes back to his Tesla coil and the ability to transmit power wirelessly. So let's go back to the basics for a moment. What is wireless charging? In a nutshell, well, we suppose you could say that it's a way to charge your car without ever plugging it in. That may seem like an alien concept to some people watching, but hey, it's already happening. It's already here. We are becoming familiar with wireless charging our mobile phones and tablets. And this tech will be much more widely used in a few years as new models get rolled out. To transmit power wirelessly, you need a source and a receiver. The source is gonna be a pad on the ground that you drive the car over, but it could also be built into the surface of your garage or road. The receiver is attached to the underneath of the car. Now these two must be somewhat aligned for the system to operate. Early systems had to be millimeter perfect and your car dashboard in those early trials would tell you to move forward a bit, back a bit, but now get it in the rough area and it's still gonna charge your car. The source will be a transmitter coil. It's powered by, well, yeah, electricity. The coil produces a magnetic field. And here's the trick. You can place a second coil into that very magnetic field and an electric current will flow. Hey presto, you can use that current in the receiver to charge your battery in your car or your phone. It's this process that we call electromagnetic induction. But the issue here is that the coils have to be very close together and they have to be almost perfectly aligned because the magnetic field has radiated out in all directions. There can be a huge amount of loss as only a certain proportion reaches the receiver. This factor is called coupling. In an ideal world, we would have a factor of well, one that is perfect coupling with no losses. But in reality, with current devices like our phones and older technology, that factor is something around half to two thirds, but it varies quite wildly actually. So what if we came up with a way to be much more precise in that energy transfer? Well, the clever folks over at MIT in the US have come up with some nifty solutions. Let's now have a look at magnetic resonance. So technology for wireless charging is evolving quickly and there are developments to increase efficiency. One of those is the introduction of magnetic resonance. They operate under similar principles, but in this case, the source and the receiver are tuned to the same resonant frequency. It's this resonance that allows much stronger coupling of the source and the receiver. It also allows the distance and the alignment of the devices to lengthen out and even reduces the need for them to be perfectly aligned. This is because it allows it to operate in what is more like a tunnel than simply emitting an omnidirectional field. Whytricity, a one company seeing efficiency above 90% from grid to battery. This is a fantastic level of efficiency and it's on par with plugging in. And that's where people tend to get a little bit surprised. How can plugging in your car, a direct connection, be as efficient as transmitting that electricity 
through the air. But it is. And let's not forget, there's always losses during charging this. Conversion, there's heat losses. Have you ever noticed that when you charge on a public charge point and the amount of kilowatt hours delivered by the charger is greater than maybe what your car shows? Those are the losses. Whytricity are one company that have produced technology with their roots with MIT that's being adopted as an industry standard. And thankfully, they're licensing out their patents and technology to a whole array of manufacturers. It's really allowing the technology to be taken up at a rapid rate and avoid issues of compatibility between manufacturers, EV charging companies, and various stakeholders. Another benefit is we're seeing the ability for wireless charging to work in reverse. By that I mean vehicle to not load, vehicle to grid, vehicle to home. Of the issues around V2G is that cars aren't always plugged in and also at the minute, all those trials are being done with the Chadamo plug. Not saying the CCS plug can't do it, but if you get home with your battery at 85%, you are unlikely to plug your car in because you've got plenty of charge for the rest of the week or your commute. And therefore it wouldn't be available for using that energy in your car to support the grid, your home or something else. But if all you have to do is drive your car to a certain spot in your driveway, your garage, that power is automatically available. And it could be that when the grid is particularly carbon intensive or expensive to generate electricity, then your car knows that as long as it has a certain percentage of battery or range by the time you leave the house tomorrow morning for your commute, it can use that electricity from your car, maybe even sell it back to the grid. And then overnight when everyone's sleeping and there's lots of spare capacity on the grid, prices tend to be cheaper then well then the pad can recharge your car and you've never had to touch a wire wireless charging may also be a great addition to autonomous driving i would say essential it offers a solution for these vehicles to simply drive over the charging pad instead of having to be plugged in well that was having to be done at depots by automated machines, robots, charging bays, introducing humans back into what is meant to be an autonomous process to charge the vehicles. So they can charge just by driving over something that makes a lot more sense. So what are we likely to see in the future? Nobody knows exactly, but it looks like there's going to be a place for wireless charging somewhere. We're making consistent gains in efficiency in delivering power, but perhaps the most important is making the technology cost effective. At the moment, it seems to be a little too expensive in some cases, but there's trials, there's research projects, and it's inevitable that scale means prices will fall as interest goes up as well. The use cases will also have a huge impact on how quickly we take up wireless charging. Taxi ranks, where cars are queued up for a few minutes at a time, I would say, sometimes longer. A great example, these cars could work nearly 24 hours a day with frequent small top-up charges when they're waiting to pick up a new passenger outside an airport or a train station. Bus stops might be a great way to electrify cities' bus fleets. This will allow for smaller batteries, lighter and more efficient buses, and potentially make charging brakes a thing of the past. But what we also need to, as a society, is to break with the hundred year old tradition and mentality of fill her up and instead switch to other forms of what Whytricity dub power snacking. I love that. Short bursts of quite high power charging at regular intervals. And yes, safety is a concern. All of these systems have a safety system built in, whereas if anything starts to interfere with that process. I know what you're thinking, my cat might walk under my car, is it gonna be zapped? Absolutely not. Safety, as always in the world of EVs, is a number one concern. We're really excited for wireless charging and especially to see how this technology develops over the coming years. It was only 10 years ago we were looking at the Nissan Leaf, maybe 50 kilowatts on DC charging and talking about charging cars and buses wirelessly now as they drive along the road. Look where we've come in the last 10 years and where we could be. I'm excited. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. Do you see a future for wireless charging? Which application do you think is best suited for wireless charging? I know that plugging in your car when you get home is not the most onerous of tasks, but 
I'm excited about it. Thanks for watching. And if you like what we do here, give us a thumbs up. It tells us to make more videos like this and we'll see you on the next one.